Hi everybody, I'm Doug Daniel, founder of the Pilots Online Academy. Our mission is making superior piloting simple. Welcome to Module 6 of Phase 1, Basic Maneuvers. Takeoff, climbs, glides, controlling airspeed and altitude. Here's what you'll learn. You'll learn how to take off, climb, level off and glide. You'll learn how to control pitch attitude. You'll learn how to control airspeed and attitude. You'll learn how trim tabs work and how to use the trim control. You'll learn why a carbureted engine needs carburetor heat and how to use it. This video and the next few assume that you are flying from a low altitude airport with a hard surface runway and in calm conditions. You'll be flying a Cessna 152. Later, you'll fly from short, rough, high, muddy, icy, wet, windy, conditions. But you'll want to learn how to do it in ideal conditions first. So let's start with taking off. You have completed a thorough pre-flight check following the checklist. With or without a control tower you are responsible for ensuring that it is safe to taxi onto the runway. With a quick visual check of the final approach path you taxi onto the runway and line up with your nose wheel on the center stripe and pointed down the runway. Smoothly advancing the throttle you drag your brakes to allow some forward movement to avoid putting debris into the propeller while building up to full power. Holding the elevator and ailerons in a neutral position you focus on keeping centered using your rudder pedals. After the first two seconds of your takeoff roll you will have advanced the throttle to full power and will have completely released the tow brakes. Looking straight ahead you see that you are still over the center stripe and the distance to each side of the runway is the same. Keeping your left hand on the controls, right hand on the throttle, you accelerate to rotation speed. Your rotation speed will be slightly below your takeoff speed. You rotate by pulling back on your elevator until the nose wheel leaves the pavement. When you rotate, you lose nose wheel steering and P factor increases. While you most likely will need to push a little harder on the right rudder pedal, that is not your focus. You focus on keeping the wings level with your ailerons and going straight with your rudder pedals. Looking over the engine cowling, you maintain a constant pitch attitude. You don't allow the nose to either come up or go down. You keep it exactly in the same place relative to the horizon as it was when you first rotated. As you accelerate, the airplane will start to fly, but you hold a steady pitch attitude, staying centered over the runway and with unchanged pitch. With a quick glance at your airspeed indicator every few seconds, you maintain focus on wings level centered over the runway and steady pitch attitude. Once your ISI tells you you are at your best rate of climb airspeed, increase your pitch attitude to maintain that airspeed. You are now climbing. Here are some mistakes to guard against during your initial takeoff and first few moments of climb. By far the most common mistake is steering with the ailerons. Most of us learn to drive first and it is truly hard to keep from lapsing back into habits formed by many thousands of driving hours. You can tell if you're steering with the wheel after you've taken off by seeing if your right wing is lower than your left, but that comes later when you climb. The consequence of this habit has led to fatal accidents, and so I want you to focus on it. It's my personal opinion. A less serious mistake is drifting off the center line after you've lifted off. As you accelerate and rotate, the required rudder pressure changes continuously. You can tell that you are moving sideways even if you have not changed directions. Airplanes, unlike cars, do not always go in the direction they point. So if you need to make a slight turn into the wind, to compensate for it pushing off the center line, do a gentle coordinated turn and return to wings level. The consequence of this habit, the habit of allowing yourself to drift off the center line, can be more serious than missing some useful 
visual cues, it can lead to mid-ear collisions. Well, let's get into climbing per se. Once again, keep your wings level with your ailerons. The best way is to look at each wingtip to see if they are the same height above the horizon. You'll be pressing on the right rudder pedal to offset the p-factor. Focus on keeping the nose from turning using your rudder pedals. By the way, I have a free gift for anyone who can answer this question. Let me say it again. I've got a free gift for anyone who can answer this question. The question is, if the wings are exactly level and the airplane is not turning at all, but the black ball in the turn coordinator is not centered, what's wrong? Just answer in the blog below the video. Controlling airspeed. By far, the elevator is the best indicated airspeed control. A few moments ago I left you in a climb, so let's continue with that. Pick a pitch attitude and fly it for a few moments. Wait for your airspeed to stabilize. If you're going too slow, lower your nose a bit and hold that pitch attitude until your plane stabilizes at its new IAS. Conversely, if you're going too fast, lift your nose a little bit and let it stabilize. You need to guard against chasing the airspeed indicator. Here's why. As a new pilot, the view inside the cockpit looks a lot more familiar than the view outside. So you will find it strange and a little disconcerting to look at the horizon and compare it with the top of the engine to sell. It's far easier to look at the ASI. You can change pitch attitude far faster than the airplane to stabilize at the airspeed. So when you're mentally inside the airplane, you won't be holding a steady attitude. The airspeed will wander. Soon you will be making too large of pitch corrections and making them too often. And that's chasing the ASI. There is an easy way of flying, and that includes climbing, cruising, or gliding at a constant indicated airspeed. It's the trim tab. A Cessna 152 has only trim for one axis, pitch. Other airplanes have trim in two or maybe all three. The controls all work pretty much the same. In your airplane, there is a black wheel with knobs on its rim. It's located below the throttle mixture and carb heat cluster. This black wheel is the pitch trim control. It can be confusing to use before you understand how they work. The pitch trim control wheel is mounted vertically so that it moves the same way you want to move the airplane. So let's put on a really big pitch trim control so it's easy to see. The tricky part is that you can only see the back of the trim wheel. The rest is buried in the instrument panel. So here's my recommendation. Think of the wheel as the airplane. If you want the nose to come up, the front of the wheel has to come up. So you push down on the back of the wheel. That's the way it works. The trim tab is a little elevator on the big elevator. When you move the control, the trim tab changes its orientation relative to the airplane's big elevator. Once again, looking outside of the airplane at the horizon, holding the pitch attitude steady, Move the trim control until you neither have to push or pull on the elevator control. Now you no longer need to focus on pitch as much. If you let your attention wander, pitch should stay steady. Let me state this explicitly. You need to spend most of your time mentally outside of the airplane. Force the airplane into the pitch attitude you want and hold it there. If the attitude you want requires too much force, trim the force out. Okay, let's talk about controlling altitude. The only real difference between airspeed control and attitude con altitude control is the instrument you monitor. For altitude control, use the altimeter. Once you reach the desired altitude, push the nose down to a level flight attitude, continuing to fine-tune the pitch attitude. As the airplane accelerates, it tries to climb. I'll explain why when we discuss pitch stability. 
So continue to trim the nose down until it reaches cruise speed. Once you reach cruise speed, reduce the power to cruise power. Continue to trim the pressure out. Remember to look outside to hold steady pitch as you trim. Gliding. Gliding is typically at a predetermined airspeed. So use airspeed controlling techniques for controlling pitch attitude. Gliding at a 152 will always be at or near idle power. That can be a problem. Your airplane has a carbureted engine. When the throttle is closed, the air pressure drops to as low as one-third of atmospheric pressure. So the drop in air pressure combined with the evaporating gasoline chills the carburetor well below the freezing point of water. If airplanes used car gas, that wouldn't be a problem. Car gas has alcohol in it, and alcohol is an antifreeze. But alcohol is so volatile that at typical cruising altitudes, it can evaporate in the fuel lines, forming bubbles and starving the engine for fuel. So there's no alcohol in avgas. So to keep ice from forming in the carburetor, the Cessna is equipped with carburetor heat. It puts unfiltered exhaust gas into the carburetor to heat the intake gases and prevent the ice from forming. These exhaust gases can make the mixture in the carburetor too rich, so you may need to lean the mixture if the engine becomes rough when the carb heat is applied. So here's what you've learned. You've learned how to take off, climb, level off, and glide. You've learned how to control pitch attitude. You learned how to control airspeed and altitude. You've learned how trim tabs work and how to use the trim control. You've learned why a carbureted engine needs carburetor heat and how to use it. In the next video, you'll learn how to roll into a coordinated turn, how to maintain constant altitude and angle of bank while you're in the turn, how and when to roll out of a coordinated turn, and how to make constant bank climbing and descending turns. So thank you very much and talk to you again soon.